So uh, we might have to adjust to the vast swathes of empty seats, but the surface should suit Mac nicely. And uh, those of you who've looked at the uh, table going into this one, it uh, makes promising reading from a Macclesfield FC perspective. Mac currently first position with 46 points from 20 games, the best defence in the league, only conceding 14 so far. Unfortunately, at the other end of the table, Widnes are in 20th and, and last position at the moment with 16 points from their 20 games. They've got the second leakiest defence in the league, having conceded 42 thus far. We've also played each other twice already at Leeson.com this season. 5-0 win for Mac in the league back in August and a 5-1 victory in the FA Trophy as well. And uh, the players are just going through final preparation. Uh, Neil Dans has made two changes to the side from last week. In come Sam Grimshaw and Alex Curran. Out go Brandon Lee and James Hardy. Hardy on the bench. So the team is Will Stanway in goal, Trey Pemberton right back, Sam Grimshaw left back, Fenson and Mendy in the middle of defence, Murphy, Dans, Curran in midfield, Kenny on the right, Berry on the left, Nicky Maynard up front. And then the uh, host today, I'll just do that quickly while the referee's going through the three match formalities. Number one, Cameron Terry. Number 16, Kai Shorrock, which is a change to the team sheet. So oh, disaster for us. Disaster for <laughs> us with no team sheet in our hand. So number 16, Kai Shorrock is right back. Three, Matty Rain. Four, Lewis Isherwood. Five, Jack Byrne. Six, Joshua Jordan. Seven, Lawrence Smith. Eight, Sean Miller. Nine, Luke Sefton. Ten, Sheriff Deans. And eleven, Stephen Rigby. Good evening, everyone. Listenership starting to grow a bit, which is always good. And uh, Alex, if you're ready, you can, uh, you can take us away. Yep, I will do. Mac are in the, the pink outfit today. Uh, I always think that they, they save this one for the muddiest of pitches. Um, but, but today, no chance of the pink being ruined by mud as we're on the, the artificial surface here at Witness. It's actually the first ever artificial surface to be put down in a stadium in England, except for the ones, the, the sort of plasticky ones that they had in the 80s. Oh, so this one being installed in, back in 2012. Um, and I imagine it's probably had a bit of an upgrade since then because the, the nature of these pitches, they're getting better and better all the time, aren't they? More and more like real grass. Yeah. I know Mac have uh, definitely benefited from having one themselves and uh, obviously it's, it's been good for Witness FC because it means that they can actually play here in the first place with the main sport being rugby that gets played here. But yeah, there is just, just enough time on the Saturdays for the, for the football to be played and the rugby on the Sundays as Witness starts to come forwards with Sefton. But Mendy cuts the ball out though. It's uh, picked up again by Deans for Witness into the box looking for Sefton. And it's hoofed behind for a corner by Fensum. But a bright start down this right-hand wing. And he's going to have a lot of time to try and pick out a clearance. And it's being chased down by Deans, one of the forwards for Witness. But Mac managed to clear it through Mendy. And now Kengney brings the ball down in midfield. And it's with the feet of Neil Dans. And now Murphy. And the ball is being carried forward by Grimshaw and now with Berry on the edge of the box plays a neat pass to Grimshaw not the best control but he still gets a shot away and it's just touched wide by the goalkeeper because Nicky Maynard had a tap in at the back post if the ball had reached him Mac win the ball back though inside the witness half can they come forwards again here it's with Neil Dans on the edge of the box thought about crossing but actually gives it out wide to Neil Kengney Kengney tries a low cross but it's cut out by witness and it's going to be brought away here by Miller. And he sends one over the top looking for Sefton. The flag stays down. Sefton has it on the edge of the box. Mike backpedaling here. Low cross by Sefton and it's cleared away. An end-to-end -end start here at the DCBL Stadium in Witness. It certainly is. It was a good save by the keeper just a moment ago, wasn't it, from Grimshaw. I was just about to say, could he get it on his right? But he found space for the shot. Attempt so far. It's Terry. Goes long from the free kick. Fenson underneath it ahead of Sefton. Murphy will have to scoop one up, but he's only cleared it straight up in the air. It's bouncing around the edge of the back box. The header is picked up by Pemberton. First time ball looking for Kengney. Kengney's done well to spin away from Jordan. Here comes Kengney now, down the right hand side. Three players to his left. Still Kengney. Onto his left foot, deflected, and then turned around the post by the goalkeeper Terry. It took a couple of touches actually. And then the keeper gets a good palm to it. Yeah, and for a corner. That could have gone absolutely anywhere, couldn't it? Good save by Terry. And the 
witness goal in the end. The ball looped towards the corner. But I think uh, Neil Kingley was only ever going to take the shot on there, wasn't he? After he Everyone back inside the box to witness. Right footed corner, fired in this time towards six yard box. Mendy's up. And behind, touching off a uh, witness player. I think it came off the shoulder of Mendy, I'm not quite sure. He got it cleanly. Might have done it. Certainly went lower down than his head, didn't it, before? Diverted towards the goal. And uh, I think it did get a touch off the defender last. Like a lot of players in a heap on the ground now in the six yard box. Chance for Miller to shoot right footed. He does. Mendy, though, senses the danger, closes it down. And rebounded out to the right hand side and Shorup. Mendy's gone all the way across with him. Mendy's done well. That powers his man. Looks to have been fouled by Miller, but no, we play on. Murphy walks the position but still finds Curran who rolls away beautifully from Byrne and now we'll try and accelerate down the left. Burns back with him. Three map players inside him if he can get across in. Still Curran. It's a deep cross to the far post. A little bit too deep. Kenley will keep it alive though, still in the area. Beautiful turn from Kenley. Onto his right foot with a shot, cleared off the line by Isherwood. Oh, <laughs> witness leading a bit of a charm life. Superb defender, you must say, though, by Isherwood. Oh, it really was. What a goal it would have been as well from Kenley. Some great twisting and turning in the penalty area to set it up. And the shot beat the goalkeeper, but cleared by a defender who had very well positioned himself, Isherwood, on the line for witness a certain goal the first time as well we've seen Neil Kenley wriggle away no right to get away from that defender and get the shot off he was surrounded by players yeah in that, in that one phase of play there was two occasions where that was covering as well and Kenley both just beat their, beat their men one on one for skill got past them covering with a, a cross which was a little over hit and there wasn't really anyone in the box to aim for so well to keep it alive. Mm. While all that was going on, Deans has picked up a yellow card for a uh, over thing, nothing yeah. at that best, I think. So uh, if it was at a time where the crowd, I don't know, was Pemberton. There's a crossing, headed clear by Burn. Again, not great distance on it, and it's back to Pemberton. And now uh, a minute into it at a time, I don't know how much there was. As witness lose the ball again inside their own half. And last chance here for Matt to get forward down the left, it's with Berry. Grimshaw will overlap, Berry will try and cut him field on that right foot, Shorup with him, dives in, but still have it out to the right now, Kenley trying to play through ball to Berry, and the radar slightly off on that occasion, as the half-time whistle blows, and it's goalless here at the break, at the uh, BCBL Stadium, I think Witness will be very happy with their first half here. Yes, they've uh, come up with some real heroic defending to prevent the Silver from scoring a couple of goals there. They will be very, very happy that it is still goalless as they look for the points that may move them off the bottom of the table. And we are underway again for the second half. Witness have got us going. And yes, they've made that one change then, the former Siltman. Jordan Simpson coming on. It's rare that we get former players really play against us as we're from such a new team, but uh, here is one. And um, Mack straight away have the ball, but it's right down by the corner flag and Pemberton is forced. And the ball is with Pemberton at the back. He's forced all the way back to Stanway, who clears all the way up to the halfway line. Uncontested headed by Byrne in the defence, but it's set back where it came from. Grimshaw now plays it to Berry, who's drifted out wide on the left wing. Now he stands up his man, and Simpson and twists and turns and is dispossessed by Simpson, his former teammate. The ball isn't cleared, it's found its way out to Grimshaw. Now Berry gets the ball out of his feet, takes on a low shot, comes from the save from Terry. And it is the first shot in, on target of this set. I'd like to see him have a dig. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he scored many, many goals this season from that position. He's on 18 already this season and is the league's top scorer. As the ball is bouncing up and down. Decent atmosphere created by the Mac fans, which you might be able to hear down our microphones. As the ball is won by witness after a bit of a tussle in the midfield, and it's Simpson, but he gives the ball away to Murphy, who gives it to Curran. 
Curran is charging towards the edge of the box now lays that to Berry into the penalty area Berry gets past one challenge sets himself to shoot and he finds the far corner James Berry gets his 19th goal of the season number 41 in his Silkman career what a player he is he gets past one challenge from Widnes and he slots it beyond the keeper to open the scoring finally for the Siltman. And after 53 minutes at the DCBL Stadium, that makes it with this nil, Siltman won. Excellent finish, as you say there, from James Berry. That's going to be the perfect moment to uh, feed him on the left-hand side, but he had an awful lot to do. He went fast, Rigby, I think, is more accustomed to playing further forward than right wing back with ease, and then just steered the shot past Terry. Nice. Confident finish from James Berry. And eight minutes after the break, Matt finally break the deadlock and just at the right time. He's going to eventually take this throw in, but it's a poor one, and it's after all that, it was cut out by Mendy. And he goes long looking for Kengney, who holds it down to Dan's in the midfield. He wants to spread one out as far as Berry, who can't quite take it in his stride, but he tries an absolutely brilliant effort. And with a stunning volley, James Berry gets his 20th of the season. And that one must be the best he's scored for us. That is a stunning volley to catch the goalkeeper off his line. Dan's with a great chips ball through to him and Berry takes one touch. And that is a fantastic, thunderous shot which goes over the keeper and loops into the far corner. Now it is a lot more comfortable for the silk than it is 2-0 here at the DCBL Stadium. Oh, thank you, thank you. If not the best, that's certainly up there from uh, James Berry's personal collection of practice so far this season. And I think Wynn just dared him to the shot almost. He gave him a lot of space. After the long ball is up there, from, uh, Neil Downs. He can stand off Berry, you know, he can shoot. on again after the um, brilliant goal that they've just seen from James Berry as Matt almost contrived to give the ball away at the back and now the ball's with Berry on a hat-trick remember and his ball forwards to Maynard is cut out it's back to Berry though calls for him to shoot but he was really far out he's run onto the misplaced pass though he's into the area takes on the shot scored by the keeper and turned in by Alex Curran for a quick fire third for the Silkman all created by James Berry once more though he is on fire at the moment it was his shot as he got to the byline, took it on from a tight angle, carried by the goalkeeper right back onto the six-yard line. And there was Alex Curran to notch up his 12th of the season. And creates some real daylight for the Silverman here in Witness. It is Witness nil, Silverman three. Yeah, what a 10-minute goal this has been. I'm back to uh, the game out of sight you must feel now from Witness. Alex Curran on the spot there, just where he needs to be, between the posts, turning in the rebound after the very effort. Very delighted for his teammate and I'm sure he would have to slot that one in himself. Mendy with the ball. In a deep position. Very long two with Berry. It's cut out by Simpson. Simpson wrestling with Berry. But Berry's turned away from him. And goes over halfway. Nice ball to you know, may not first touch is heavy, just allows this would to step in. And now it's poked forward looking for the run of Sefton. Mendy has to be careful here. Sefton with him. Mendy and Sefton shoulder to shoulder. It's a foul against Mendy on the edge of the box. He? And it's a yellow card for Mendy. Yellow card for Mendy. And a race for Sefton. And Sefton was eaten up the ground there. Shoulder to shoulder between the two of them. I just wonder whether he was saved by the fact that it was right on yeah, the right edge of the box. The touch by Sefton was, was heading off towards the corner flag, wasn't it, as well? those two things it's just what saved Mendy there in the uh, reverse fixture didn't he? he was the bright spot quick free kick taken Rigby with it deflected behind off the head of Cowan and behind for a corner the witness will whip it in good in swinging with pace as well it's in the six yard box bouncing around Jordan was close to getting it instead it's back to the edge of the box Simpson trying to turn instead he plays a nice ball out to the right Heavy touch there by Witness Man, flicks over Stanway and then headed behind by Mendy. And there's appeals in there from Rigby who chipped it over Stanway. And then there was a, a collision between the two. And look at that, Alex. Yeah, well, well I, didn't, I didn't really get much of a sight of the uh, 
the collision with Stanway and the attacker it must have been very late, which is maybe why the refs missed it as well. Salvage and Pride, and they have another corner here with this outswinger this time. Mendy wins the first header. Matt will try and press through Curran. Curran now pressing his man, wins the ball from Smith. We'll continue the chase, but Rain should and does see it back to his goalkeeper. Ten. Afternoon's work here for Matt, doesn't it? Yep, I think so. It's job well done. Haven't won by as many as they did against Witness on either of the last two outings, but I think they are an improved side at this point. Witness now have the ball on the left through Hassel. Measuring across for set, it's blocked by a combination of Lowe and Pemberton. Nicely forward by Cowan up to Curran. He finds Keng. Curran on the overlap. Keng cuts in field. Now tries to play reverse ball. A great one into Maynard. Chance to shoot. Squares for Berry. And James Berry completes his hat trick. Lifted into the far corner of Terry's goal. Unselfish work from Nicky Maynard. And a hat trick for James Berry. Oh, he doesn't deserve it. That's fantastic play there from the Silkman. And Nicky Maynard is the creator. He set it on a plate for James Berry there. And it's the, the most unselfish piece of striking play you'll ever see, knowing that his teammate was on that trip. Not taking on the shot himself, but on the line. Very nice way that is to crown the new year. Yeah, so 